Different kinds of transportation technologies are currently experiencing a huge boost in popularity, especially considering the latest trends of global warming, a phenomenon which now seems almost irreversible. The situation in the space exploration sector is a little bit different. Currently, most of the rocket-based space launch technology is literally obsolete and essentially needs to be replaced by new financially sustainable approaches. Last time US Congress checked with NASA, the cost to send a 5-person crew to Mars was $50 billion. $10 billion a person. Recently, Elon Musk said Mars ticket will cost $500,000 and eventually as low as $100,000. This is one one hundred thousandth of the current cost. Flying to Mars to another planet and back will cost less than two first class seats in Emirates Airlines. It will not happen over days or months though. It will take years to get to that point. Right this second, it runs to about $22,000 to send a kilogram cargo to space. That's about $2,500 per cheeseburger. This is why human beings have only been to the moon's surface half a dozen times. The fact that in 2019, we have a space travel paradigm that would have disappointed all the hopes of 1969 is not due to lack of engineering or scientific genius. It's because of the cost of the way we get to space has remained stubbornly high. If we could dramatically reduce the cost, we would have better space science, better communication systems access to off-planet resources, better ability to control our climate, and best of all, the solar system would open for exploration and settlement. For the perspective, imagine you are in California, and you are about to move to New York, and you buy a brand new Nissan Altima for $20,000, and you ride it to New York. Right after you reach there in two days, the car stops working and you dump it to the harbor. The same thing is happening with the rocket industry until SpaceX. To understand why it's currently so expensive to get stuff up to space, you need to understand what you're looking at when you see a rocket. A rocket is essentially a tube of explosive propellant, with a little bit of cargo on the top. For a typical mission going to low Earth orbit about 500 kilometers high, by mass you are looking at 80% fuel, 16% the rocket itself, and 4% cargo. And that 4% is actually on the high end, but if you are going farther out, it gets closer to 1 or 2%. But when you look at costs, things are inverted. The propellant is a negligible component of price. It's gonna run you a mere few hundred thousand dollars. For example, the cost to build the most powerful rocket ever made, Saturn V, that took humans to the moon, was nearly one billion dollars just for the rocket itself. So basically, most of the cost is taken up by rocket, which is almost always discarded after one use. Launching rockets is really expensive and most of the space on board is taken up by propellant. This leaves two ways we can try to drastically lower the cost to make space access cheap. The first, recovering the launch vehicle, and the second, using less propellant. Vehicle recovery suddenly became reality in 2015, when the basic idea is pretty simple. You can save money if you don't junk your vehicle after one use. Using less propellant is a little trickier, even though propellant is 80% of the spacecraft's starting mass. To understand why, consider a situation where you have to drive from Spain to South Korea and back again. You are offered two ways to get your fuel. The first, guess up at stations along the way, and the second, take all the fuel you will need for the whole trip and drag it along with you. Of course, you would rather use option one. Consider why in particular. A car is just a machine that converts fuel into forward motion. If your car is really heavy, it takes more fuel to get a certain amount of forward motion. If you gas up regularly, most of your weight is the car, not the fuel. This means the fuel the engine is using right this second is supplying forward motion mostly to the vehicle and not to the fuel in the tank. In the case of option 2, dragging all the fuel you will need for the whole trip, you are dragging an enormous tanker. The weight of the fuel is probably far, far higher than the weight of the car itself, especially at the beginning. You are using most of the energy derived from the fuel just to move the fuel itself. So most of the fuel's energy goes to moving other fuel. It's the same as snake starting to eat its own tail to feed itself. And the result is, the total amount of fuel you need for the whole trip is far higher in case 2 than in case 1. So your little caravan, just like other space rockets, is mostly made of fuel, not of vehicle or cargo. Unfortunately, it's a little hard to build gas stations for rockets along the way to Mars or other celestial objects. So without major change, we are stuck in scenario 2. We are as if dragging all the fuel from Spain to South Korea when it comes to space travel. All this sets up some very tantalizing math. 
If you could make launch vehicle recoverable, you could potentially eliminate 90% of the cost of the space launch. Or if you could use just 3 quarters as much fuel, you will be able to fit 6 times as much cargo, instantly dividing the cost per kilogram by 6. So if you take an average person in terms of cargo, it would hypothetically cost $1.5 million to get into space now. If we divide this sum by 6, it will cost $250,000. So this is the reason why Elon Musk is confidently stating that moving to Mars will eventually cost in between $100,000 to $500,000. The hard thing here is that you're fighting fundamental physics. Cheapest orbit available is a low Earth orbit. People often think that orbit means there is no gravity. This is incorrect. In fact, the International Space Station, which is in a low Earth orbit right now, is usually around 360 kilometers high and experiences about 90% of the gravity you experience on Earth. So why do astronauts float around like there is no gravity? Because they are going really, really fast, about 8 kilometers per second. Although they are pulled towards Earth all the time, they are on high enough altitude that they always miss it. Even though low Earth orbit is the cheapest orbit to achieve, it's still pretty expensive to get there. Getting a big hunk of metal to 8 kilometers per second is not an easy task. And the first method to make space access cheap is to make reusable rockets. Reusable rockets are the best bet for the cheaper spaceflight in the short term. The most valuable part of it is a booster, which is basically all the expensive engines and propellant. It's a traditional part of the rocket, but rather than falling into the ocean as they do now, they fall to Earth and land after they finish the mission. This doesn't fix the problem that the rocket only holds 4% cargo, but it potentially drives the cost way down. There are a few difficulties with this approach though. You have to keep extra propellant on board for the landing phase, which lowers efficiency. You want to carry the smallest amount of extra propellant possible, but this makes the landing phase very hard. SpaceX is now working on an initial prototype of the stainless steel Starship rocket that could eventually carry people to the moon and the Mars. This two-stage vehicle composed of the super heavy rocket, which is a booster, and the Starship spacecraft, which carries passengers and cargo. Instead of aluminium and carbon fiber, the company has decided to build the Starship out of stainless steel. Stainless steel is much cheaper than the carbon fiber. Well, after scrapping process, carbon fiber will cost $200 per kilogram, compared to stainless steel, to just $3, but it's a bit heavier. However, the rocket can be lighter with stainless steel if you build it with other metals. Most steel alloys get brittle at cryogenic temperatures. That's not the case for stainless steel with high chrome nickel content. It gets stronger in cold conditions, but it also maintains ductility. That means stainless steel has high fracture toughness which could prevent small structural imperfections from developing into cracks. Additionally, stainless steel surface can remain completely sound at 820 degrees Celsius, about 5 times higher than carbon fiber or aluminium. A very serious issue is that nobody yet knows what it will cost to refurbish a used rocket, especially when it's made from stainless steel. That thing has gone to space, man. You just can't put a spit shine on it and put it back on the launch pad. SpaceX is a privately held company that does not publish its financial statements, making a detailed cost analysis difficult. For example, the US Space Shuttle, which was designed to be a reusable launch vehicle, ended up being more costly than the regular rocket precisely because refurbishing was so expensive. There is an ongoing argument over whose fault was this. The engineers, Congress, the Air Force, a risk averse public, and more. But the bottom line is that the program was largely done in by the cost of the getting shuttle launch ready again after a flight. This is why when lots of people were sad about space shuttle retiring, a lot of space nerds like me were glad to see it go. There is a reason to hope that SpaceX's reusable launch vehicles can do a lot better. After all, SpaceX is the first company to successfully put cargo into space, the land part of its rocket. If it really can bring the price down, this may prove the biggest development in the space travel in generation. Thanks for watching, the second episode of the series is coming up as well. We will talk about other exotic type of rocket other than reusable or traditional. Support the channel on Patreon and please subscribe and hit the bell button so you will not miss it when it's out. And this episode was inspired by the book called Soonish by Kelly and Zach Wienersmith. Great book, give it a try.